Okay, in this video, we are going to look into troubleshooting a 555 timer circuit. Now, this circuit turns on for 5 seconds, and then off for 25 seconds in a continuous cycle. Now, this circuit was built to control a water mister for a greenhouse for plant propagation. Now, the owner of the greenhouse wanted his water mister to come on for 5 seconds, then off for 25 seconds, and he didn't have that setting in his mister, so I built up this little circuit board on Vero board. And then I mounted it in an enclosure and I filled it with uh, two part epoxy potting compound so it would be waterproof. And then you could hook up the three wires to his mister to control uh, the duty cycle of 5 seconds on and 25 seconds off. Worked out pretty well. I made a few of these. But the one I was having problems with was this one here. It's basically the same circuit. It's built in a Vero board. Now when I power this circuit up it kicks out my power supply so it's drawing too much current. So in this video we're going to look into why the circuit is drawing so much current when we, when we power it up. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of my Mr. Controller using a 555 timer. It's powered by 12 volts and here's my charging capacitor and I have two steering diodes with two different charging and discharging resistors. So in charge time it's going to charge in this direction through this diode through a 330 k ohm resistor and it will charge up this capacitor. Now when the capacitor reaches the threshold on pins 2 and 6 it's going to trigger pin 7 open collector to go to ground and it's going to shunt this part to ground so it's going to discharge the capacitor through a 1.5 mega ohm resistor through the diode to ground and that will be your 20, 25 second. So charge up time is 5 second and charge down time, discharge time, would be 25 seconds and that will give us a duty cycle of 5 seconds on and 25 seconds off. Okay, I have my circuit board connected up to my power supply. And I have my current range set for 500 milliamps. So if my circuit draws more than 500 milliamps, it's going to overload and kick out the circuit. So I'll turn on the power. You can watch my overload light. See, she came on. My overload light came on, indicating I'm drawing more than 500 milliamps on my little 555 timer circuit board. Okay, I have my board powered down. I'm connecting my ohmmeter across the power input to the circuit board right across the filter capacitor I'm getting 5.564 kilo ohms so at 12 volts that should only draw a few milliamps, a couple of milliamps so next I'm going to get my component tester out and we'll continue to troubleshoot the circuit board this is my component tester now you could build these, they're easy to build so on the input of this box I have two, two uh, banana plugs for my, for my test leads these are my test leads here I got sharp tips so I could dig into the pads on the PC board. And on the other side are two BNC connectors. And that connects up to a scope so you can just get an old 20 megahertz uh, analog scope and you plug in your BNC connectors and you plug that into channel 1 and channel 2 of the scope. Then you go into the XY mode on the scope. So what the scope will display, it will display the voltage across the component will be your say your X and the current through the component would be your Y. So you'll get, an, you'll get a voltage versus current graph on your scope and you'll be able to trace uh, transistors, diodes, uh, shorts and opens. So this is a very handy uh, box to have and I was going to make a video how to build one of these but there's a couple of videos on, on, online that are very good so I'll link that down in the description box and you can build your own component tester to troubleshoot your control board. Okay, I have my component tester up and running. So the first thing we'll check are the steering diodes. There's one of them. You can see it has a nice sharp edge. So it's a good diode. So I'll check the second one. That looks good. So next I'll check the timing capacitor, which is a fairly large capacitor. So there's the timing capacitor. So the circle is intact, so it's a good capacitor. So now we'll check the filter capacitor, the capacitor across the power supply. Now I can see a problem there. If you look at the very top right hand corner, you see the edge. There's a there's two vertical there's two vertical lines which indicate a short. So at a certain voltage this capacitor is breaking down. It, it's a it's a dipped tantalum capacitor and they're famous for doing that. You can see at the very top right hand corner where we would get a vertical line that's a short. So she's shorting at a certain voltage. So if I short my two terminals together, I short my probes together, you see I get a vertical line, that means a short. 
So when I go across the capacitor, when we see those two little vertical lines at the very top, very top uh, of the of the display, that indicates a short. So we have a short in our capacitor, and it's it's showing up on my component tester. Okay, I dug up a new 10 microfarad, 35 volt dipped tantalum capacitor out of my parts bin. So we'll hook it up to my component tester and have a look at the signature of a new component. Okay, I have a new 10 microfarad, 35 volt dipped tantalum capacitor on my component tester. So you can see the signature there. It's very clean. I have a clean circle. There's no vertical lines indicating no, there's no short. So that's what a good capacitor should look like. But these dipped tantalum capacitors, they're famous for shorting out on over voltage or reverse voltage. Okay, so now we know why my 555 timer circuit drew so much current on power up because of my shorted tantalum capacitor across my power supply. It's quite common for these capacitors. And I kind of figured that's what it was for this simple circuit, but if you're troubleshooting a complex circuit, have a look at these uh, type of capacitors. And you'll notice that sometimes even a ohmmeter will not detect it because an ohmmeter doesn't put out enough voltage, enough terminal voltage to break down the capacitor. So I thought I'd make this little video, show you how I troubleshoot circuits with my component tester.